I get asked all the time in my Twitch stream about which class is best for beginners or easiest to learn at first in ESO. While all classes can be quote unquote an easy class to play with enough time put into them, not all of them are easy to learn or pick up right when you get into ESO. There are multiple reasons why that's the case, and so today I wanna to go through my top beginner or easy to play classes right from level three in ESO. Now, even if you aren't a new player, you can still get something out of this video because maybe you are returning to the game or you're just trying to find a class that is easier to play than the one that you chose. Whatever the reason may be, I want you to understand that just because these classes are easy or beginner friendly doesn't mean they aren't good in the end game as well. These classes are actually fantastic for end game content, so if that is your end goal for ESO, I do not want you to fret. I also want to mention that every class in this game is viable for every piece of content, but through my experience of playing all the classes in the game and leveling them from you know 3 to level 50 into CP range, I found that some classes don't feel as rewarding, don't feel as satisfying, and honestly are just harder to really grasp and utilize in the early game. So without further ado, let's get into my best beginner classes to play in ESO. Real quick, I do just want to give a shout out to my patrons and my members of YouTube. If you want to check out all that information and become one of these, you can check out the links below in the description. And if you ever want to watch me play live, I stream on twitch.tv slash this Tuesday through Friday. We have a Discord with multiple guilds that you can join on multiple platforms. And our website, brawbygotthis.com, is linked below and on the screen here. So, what makes a class easy to play? Is it that the abilities are easier to understand? Does the class just do more overall damage? Is there any other factors that are involved, and etc.? Well, what I think makes a class easier to play is a couple things. One of the things that make classes easier to play is the type of skills that you have access to early on, or just in general as you get through the game. Is that skill a AoE ability? Is it a single target ability? Do you have healing on your class trees? Do you have an easy way to sustain your resources? Do you have shields? There's a lot of different things that go into that. There's also things like, are your skills dependent on other mechanics within your class? So for instance, the Necromancer has a corpse mechanic, and so if you don't understand the corpse mechanic, then you won't be able to utilize a lot of the skills in your class well. These are all things that I will highlight today briefly with these classes. I'm going to focus on three classes today that I believe are the easiest to play. The first class that I want to highlight, which may surprise some people, is my main class, the Dragonite. This class is actually getting a buff in the next update that's coming in March that will make it even easier to play for new players. Dragonites are very good at clearing mobs and doing burst damage for early game content. This is the class that I use to do every single quest in the game for the most part and do all the overland content with. But also in the late game, this class can be a heavy hitter for DPS and can be a fantastic tank as well. There's a lot of great abilities that this class has in synergy. But let's look at what makes the Dragonite a very beginner friendly class. So looking at the DPS side of things, Dragonite has easy to use abilities that make a lot of sense and are just very simple. And it also does a lot of burst damage in my opinion. But not only do they do nice burst damage, it's the type of abilities that they are and how easy they are to utilize. The whole Ardent Flame line that you see right here with Molten Whip, Burning Embers, Engulfing Flames, Unrelenting Grip, and Flames of Oblivion are all fantastic skills. Engulfing Flames will augment all of your flame abilities. It is a conal ability, so it's going to hit multiple targets. The morph of this, Noxious Breath, is also going to augment your poison abilities. Dragonites are known for poison and fire, as if you look at your passives here, World and Ruin increases the damage of your flame and poison attacks by 5%. A lot of these damaging abilities are fire or poison uh, effects. Uh, you'll see the poison effects if you morph them into the other ones for the most part, like Burning Embers will be uh, Venomous Claw. But the reason Engulfing Flames is easier to use is because you don't have to really think about it. You just click the skill and then all your fire abilities or flame abilities or poison abilities, if you have the morph, 
are augmented. So if you're using destruction stabs, you can use force pulse, you can use elemental blockade, and this is gonna do fire damage, that's gonna be, or flame damage, that's gonna be augmented. This is gonna have some flame damage on force pulse, that's gonna be augmented. There's just so many things that get augmented, and then all these other skills as well. Burning Embers is actually getting a buff in the next update, like I said, so this is actually going to heal you for 100% of the damage that it does immediately in the next patch, which is amazing, because it's just a great self-heal. Unrelenting Grip is an ability that if you do not actually pull a target, so if you use this against a boss, you will get the full Magicka uh, resources back that you used to cast it. So you can just spam this over and over and over again. Molten Whip is a great single target ability early on in the game that will help you just destroy mobs. Flames of Oblivion just has an amazing ability attached to it just for having it on your bar. It, it gives you major prophecy and savagery. Let me move over to like the Earthen Heart line. Eruption is a AOE ability that is a powerhouse and does so much burst damage and lasts for a long time for uh, players. I mean, this ability is just so good for the late game and when you get this unlocked. If you get this unlocked early on, it is fantastic. It is. It just will rip through mobs in the overland. Not only that, you have multiple other skills in here that are very, very useful. Volatile Armor is a very nice shield and very good for tanks. Choking Talons is a root for tanks that you can use. You can use Burning Talons, which will do more damage. Green Dragon Blood is a heal. Igneous Weapons, which will help you and your teammates. Igneous Shield, which is another great shield. So as a tank, if you're trying to learn, you have a lot of skills as well that are just very easy to learn and utilize. The ultimates are also fantastic. Standard of Might does so much flame damage over time. It also applies major defile to them, reducing their healing received and healing rec health recovery. And if you stand inside of this, you're going to get a 15% damage boost and you're going to reduce damage taken by 15% which is insane. The reason that this class is not further up on the list than the other two I'm going to mention is because you don't get eruption until the last skill in the Earthen Heart Tree. It doesn't mean that it's not good or anything like that, but having this early on in the game is really, really helpful. So if you got this earlier, which you can get this pretty early on if you stack a lot of these skills on your bar, it's not that hard, but the fact that it's not early on the skill tree does make it a little bit more difficult. But like I said, if you're using a Magic of Dragonite, you can pair this with the Destruction Staff line. It's very, very nice. If you're a Stamina Dragonite, you can pull this, uh, pair this with Dual Wield, you'll get Flurry, which is amazing, and Whirlwind, which is an AoE. You can also pair it with two-hand abilities like Stampede, which is also a very good charge and does a uh, damage over time, but in an area as well, which is just easy mode for uh, beginner players. And so, not only is this easy to play early on, but in the end game, again, you can do a lot of burst damage. Uh, speaking of PvP, I don't really play PvP, but I do know that some players like playing this class in PvP. But for PvE, if you're playing a Magicka DK, you can do nice AoE burst damage, clear mobs so quickly. It is fantastic. I absolutely love playing this in Dungeons and Trials. The next class that I think is easy to play, other than the Dragonite, is at the number two spot, and that is the Sorcerer. One variant of this class is my favorite DPS class in the game. But first, let's talk about why the Sorcerer is so beginner friendly, and why it's easier, in my opinion, than the Dragonite. The first thing I wanna mention is I wanna mention the Storm Calling line. Again, the Sorcerer has such good abilities at its toolkit early on, and it's just so overpowered. Mage's Fury is the first skill you'll get in this, and it's just a great damage a skill. I mean, it's just insane. This skill is ridiculous. Okay, Hurricane, which also morphs to uh, Lightning Form, is something that's going to actually make you faster, and it's going to do damage around you and give you Major Resolve, which is absolutely insane. But this is just such a nice skill that makes you just get around the map very quickly uh, in case you are getting snared or anything like that. You then have another AoE skill right after that, Lightning Splash that goes to Lightning Flood. Uh, this one does so much damage for AoE and it's just going to help you tear through early game mobs as a Mag Sork or if you want to use it on Sam Sork you could, but really as a Mag Sork. And then we get to the fourth skill of this line, Crit Surge, which is the, one of the most broken skills in the game. This is going to give you Major Brutality and Sorcery, so that is fantastic for Mag and Sam Sork. 
While active, you're, every time you deal critical damage, it heals you for 3,300 health. This can occur every one second. So every time you crit, you heal. This is one of the biggest reasons Sorcerer is so easy to play because you have so much self-healing and sustain. It's just so very, very easy. You also get great passives like Capacitator in this line and Energized, which are fantastic. But next, let's go to the next line that makes this ability, makes this class very, very easy to play as a beginner. Daedric Summoning. Daedric Summoning, the first one you get are little familiars, right? The Unstable Familiar. This is going to do, uh, if you choose the damage one, is going to do shock AoE damage to enemies. Having pets in this game is really, it makes ESO very, very easy, especially early on, because this pet can do shock damage. This pet can also heal you. The other morph of this can also heal you as well, but this can heal you and do damage too. You're just basically doing free damage and not having to do anything. Um, you also have Conjured Ward, which gives you an insane damage shield. And then you have Bound Armaments. Use this one or the other one, but this one gives you a flat 10% or a flat 8% max stamina boost while slotted and your line attack still 10% more damage, which is insane. These two lines are the biggest reasons that stamps or that sorcerer is one of the easiest classes to play in the game. You also have the dark magic line, which is still very, very good. But in my opinion, these two lines just make this class easy mode. If you're using a stamp sork, and you pair it with two-handed with Stampede, you will be able to fly around the map. You'll be able to do a lot of AOE damage. You'll be able to do so much burst damage. It's insane, okay? If you're playing Mad Sork, you can just use Destruction Stabs to AOE down uh, targets. You can use your pets to help you out as well. And you just have nice single target abilities like Mage's Fury, and you have your healing right here with Critical Surge. It's something that, again, is one of the staples of why this class is so much easier to play than other classes. With the Necromancer, like I said, the corpse mechanic is something that is a little bit more difficult as well to use. You have to understand what you're doing with it, and if you don't, you're not gonna be able to use your abilities. You don't have to worry about that with playing a sorcerer. Final class, and the easiest class, and most beginner-friendly class in ESO, in my opinion, is the Templar. I don't think this surprises many people just because this is just uh, a class that I think a lot of people recommend to beginners, but this is just something that I always recommend to people that come in my stream. I recommend this and the Sorcerer a lot because it's just so easy to play and utilize. It, it It's honestly just easy mode. And the reason that this class is above the Sorcerer is because of one skill. And that skill is Biting Jabs and Puncturing Sweep. Now, there are other reasons that this class is great, but this one skill right here is the first skill that you get when you come into the game. And it's actually getting a buff in the next update, which is insane. But this skill does everything that you want. It literally does literally everything. It doesn't scratch your back, but it does area of effect damage in an area of eight by six meters. It does tons of burst damage and it heals you if you use puncturing sweeps for 43% of the damage done. You can literally spam this one ability throughout the whole game and basically clear the whole game. I'm pretty sure there are players that have done veteran Maelstrom Arena with just this skill. It's just so broken. And that is why the Templar is one of the easiest classes to play in the game. Another skill that I want you to pay attention to on this line is Luminous Shards or Blazing Spear. Blazing Spear will do more damage, but this gives one of the best synergies in the game for your teammates, but it just does so much AoE damage as well. I And it's so satisfying, like you feel like you're just melting enemies. Another reason that this class is ridiculous is the Radiant Destruction skill here. This is one of the most broken execute skills in the game. If you just look at the base part of this, it says it deals up to 480% more damage to enemies below 50% health. You literally just hit this and it's just basically draining their health. It is so dumb. And then you have the Restoring Light line, which has so much healing for your healers and everything like that. It's just so easy to play. Like you can play a hybrid with this so easily. The ultimates are also absolutely ridiculous, but again, the big reason that Templar is above all these other classes, in my opinion, is because of the ease of use and the entry level of it is so much easier because of puncturing sweeps. If this skill was on the fifth line here, 
it's not that this class wouldn't be as good, but it's just like when you get this skill at the beginning of the game, you literally can make the game easy by just using this skill. Again, some of the top things that make classes easy to use are when you get your abilities, what type of abilities that you get. So that could be AOE, like I said, single target, um, healing for yourself, sustain. And then again, how simple it is to actually understand your skills. The reason that the Necromancer isn't on this list is not because it's not a good class, it's just because it's a little bit more complicated. With the corpse mechanic, if you don't understand how that works, if you don't use your skills right and you spam your skills too much, you will not have the ability to use some of your damaging skills as the Necromancer. But you could accidentally just spam puncturing sweeps too much and it doesn't really matter because every time you spam it, you're just gonna heal and you're gonna do more damage. So the margin of error is less on a class like Templar and Sorcerer versus a class like Necromancer. Now, I'm not saying that you can't find the Necromancer, the Warden, the Nightblade easy to use. But from my experience of playing ESO with all these classes, again, the Sorcerer, Templar, and Dragonite for me, were easier to play early on and easier to grasp in my opinion. Not everyone will have that same opinion though, so let me know down in the comments what class you think is easiest and most beginner friendly in ESO. And if you don't know what class you want to play, I've got a video up here in the cards that helps you identify which class is best for you. But thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, heavy attack that bell icon to stay up to date on all the content in the channel. But until next time, y'all, just remember to have faith to be great, and I'll see you on ESO.